All right. How is everybody doing this evening? I am here with the Ionic guy, Corbin, here. Uh, and we are here for the Electron VBOX 48 amp giveaway. Hi, Matt. I see you in the comments there, ready to win. I'm sure you and many other people <laughs> are ready to win. Um, but we figured we would do a, a Q&A uh, before we do the drawing to uh, talk to you guys and get to know you guys, and you guys can get to know us some. Uh, so feel free to leave some comments and ask us some questions. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? How many people? We got 11 people in here. 11, 12 right now, it looks like. <clears throat> Matt, you're the only one talking right now, bud. <laughs> you one of your regulars? <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, just a, hey, uh, so you guys are, are watching right now. Can you verify that you can see and hear both of us? I just want to make sure that this is working uh, how I want it to here on the live stream. Great to see you too, Jeff. How's it going, Jeff? How's it up in the Arctic? <laughs> All the cool people show up first. I agree. <clears throat> <laughs> you can see in here. Good. I'm glad this is working. I, I didn't know how, uh, just so you guys who are watching know, I have Zoom running in the background, and then this is taking the Zoom feed uh, and distributing it to, to YouTube here. So I'm glad that's working how it should. How are you guys doing? What do you guys want to talk about? Need a GV60 guy. <laughs> Corbin, you gonna get a GV60? <laughs> Getting one in two weeks for a week for uh, from a uh, Genesis. Yeah, I'll make some content on that. I just had the Genesis GV70 last week, and that car was something else. It's a big yeah. step up in terms of luxury compared to the Ionic Five or the EV6. Yeah, I haven't seen them in person, but from the photos, I they look really nice to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a different look than the Ionic Five for sure. It's not for everybody. Yeah. EV9. <clears throat> yeah, the EV9. I don't know if you guys saw, but I posted a, a video of the EV9. Uh, the I saw got to see the GT line and the Land, um, and I got some video inside and out. And I am a huge fan of the EV9. It is comfortable. It's got lots of space. Like I really like that vehicle a lot. Did they let you sit in it? Yeah. Yep, I sat in it. Um, I was actually there before. I think I was supposed to. I kind of just walked over, um, and then I was talking to the Kia guys, and they let me uh, spend some time inside it and, and look around and sit around and play with buttons and stuff. And it's really nice. nice. I like it a lot. How was, how was Electrify Expo? Electrify Expo was awesome. Um, there wasn't a ton of show cars, um, but it was cool to be able to see like the EV9, to see the Polestar 3 uh, was nice. Um, there were some BMWs there that are really nice that I hadn't uh, really seen in person before. Fly, fly right here. Um, the like i7 uh, was there, which is really nice. That thing has this big, huge like 8K display for the back seat, which is yeah. crazy. Um, but it was it was cool to see all that and a lot of a lot of people there um, learning about EVs and stuff, which was pretty cool. Did you see anybody else from YouTube there? I saw a few people that knew me from YouTube. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I did see a couple people recording. I didn't know them personally, but I saw <clears throat> a few people recording stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's see. See, somebody's asking if uh, Hyundai is going to have an equivalent to the EV9. And <clears throat> yes, they are. They're going to have the Ionic 7, which should be being announced in probably the next six to eight months, I would say, if I had to guess. Yeah. I saw some spy photos of it today from Korea. Yeah, there's been a lot of spy photos coming out lately of various vehicles, the uh, mm -hmm. 7, the EV4, the, all kinds of stuff. Yep, the EV5. Yep. It's good to see that there's more stuff on the way. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> and what did, did you see um, the EV5 spy shots? The charge port is moving to the front passenger fender. I Do did you think see that. that means Max? I think that means Nax is coming. Yeah, I think it does too. I think that the fact that it's up there because that there's no EGMP vehicles that have it up there at this point, is there? No. So um, with them doing that, I think that's a big sign that they are trying to make it to where it will be, it'll work well with the, the Tesla charging stalls. So it's good. Right. And what's interesting is that they've, all these cars they've been de developing for probably two, three plus years. So they've been thinking about it for a while then. Yeah. Yep. 
Let's see what do we got here. The EV9, the first three-row mainstream EV in the U.S. Mainstream? Um, I think so. Um, there's like the Cheap. Rivian R1S. Cheaper. Yeah, I'll say there's the Rivian R1S, um, which is kind of expensive. But for like a something that a normal family might be able to afford, I, I think the EV9 is probably the first one, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think too many families are going to be buying the uh, Cadillac IQ at 130K. Yeah. It does look really nice, <laughs> but that's oh, it's a, a very cool car. A little expensive. Yeah. <clears throat> Any idea what Kia is unveiling at the Quail? Um, it's the Quail. I don't know what the Quail is, but I know there's supposed to be something being unveiled. I think so. I saw something. I think I don't know if this is what you're talking about, Matt. Um, some flavor <laughs> EV6. So um, there's a special edition for North America that is a green EV6. Um, that information has started coming out on and people have actually started having those delivered. And I think that is what, um, if I'm thinking about what you're thinking about, Matt, I think that's, that's what that is. It's, it's a special North American one. Um, <clears throat> I think it highlights one of the awards that the EV6 won. Um, but if you go to kiaevforums.com, there is a thread there uh, about it. Um, there's also some posts in the Facebook group, the Kia EV6 EV9 Owners USA Facebook group has some uh, photos of it there too. <clears throat> Supposedly the uh, EV5 is also being unveiled officially next week as well. I think the EV5 is going to be nice. I think it's going to be a good yeah. size for a lot of people. Yeah. I think putting the connectors in the front is generally a better position. Yeah, I think it is too. Um, it makes it easier when you're pulling into charging stalls, no matter where you are, whether it's Tesla or Electrify America or whatever, as opposed to all the people trying to figure out a way to back in, since there are so many people that can't back their cars up, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes the charging stalls are kind of tight. So, As long as it's heated, because if you live in a snowy area and you do a lot of driving in the snow and you get home and that thing's frozen shut. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Kona Electric in some markets is going to have a heated charge port. That's pretty cool. That's smart. That's something they should have. I, I agree. Uh, there's a flurry of press concerning the wireless CarPlay Android Auto. Head unit software update. Has anything heard anything new? Um, I haven't heard anything in the past few months. Um, I know they're supposed to be, supposedly it's coming and we haven't had a big update since the announcement or the leaks or whatever that it's coming. Um, that will probably happen around October, November timeframe for our vehicles. So if it is in the next update, that's when we would see it uh, is in about two to three months. So I hope it's coming, but yeah, North American car of the year edition. I think that's, that's what that is. Yeah. Yeah. The naming conventions are just all over the place. It doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason, at least with Kia's lineup. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's whatever, I guess, the people who design the things want it to be. MA1 has been flawless. Yeah, I've heard good things about the Motorola MA1. Um, I The CarLink at 5.0 works really well. I know a lot of you guys have seen that review I did. Um, I personally, with wireless Android Auto, because both my wife and I have Android phones, um, since we both drive the car fairly often, I have a, a, a CarSify unit which makes it very easy to switch between phones. So that's what I use personally. Yeah, I used the Carsify for a bit. I it, it was good. I like that you can change a lot of the settings with it too. Yeah. Like the Motorola MA1, you can't change anything in terms of its behavior. Oh, really? Well, I didn't know that. I haven't tested that one personally. Yeah, it's just you plug it in, connect to it, and, and that's, that's it. it. Ionic Guy versus Technically Jeff Race. I'm always down for a race. I've got lots of racing videos. I still have some that I haven't even posted to my YouTube channel. So, um, if I'm racing you, I'm taking the uh, the Genesis GV70 electrified with the the boost button. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I need to borrow somebody's uh, EV6 GT. <clears throat> Let's see. The MA1 keeps staying connected to my phone when I'm at home. So the the thing with all of the adapters is the uh, USB port will stay powered on um, as long as the car is charging. But 
the, it will power down within a few minutes. I think it's, it's probably the same for the Ionic 5, right? For the EV6, within a few minutes of turning the car off, the USB port powers down. Um, yeah. So it should disconnect. It will power back up if you walk by the vehicle and it senses, like you have the key in your pocket and it senses mm -hmm. that, or if you check on the car using the app, uh, it will power back up. But otherwise, it should power down. Hyundai Kia will backport future features from new and coming vehicles to existing vehicles like full over the air, wireless, Android Auto, CarPlay, Smart Key 2. I don't think so. I don't think it's possible for some of the stuff, unfortunately. In my conversations with Hyundai's uh, employees or public relations people, their opinion is you bought a car, it has what it has, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, they want they want to keep selling cars, so it doesn't make sense for them on that front. And that's a good point. If they're adding features to new cars to kind of incentivize you to buy a new car, why add it to other cars that are going to make you hold on to that and not buy a new one? But that's not ideal from a customer standpoint. No. But some things like full over the air updates, that's not possible with the EV6 or Ionic 5 at this point. We can just do infotainment. Right. Um, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, that is possible. Um, hopefully that is coming because that should be coming to all of the, uh, what is the name of a standard 5W radio uh, units that we have in our cars that Nero has it like all of the Kias and Hyundais or most of them at least at this point have, have that same type of radio. So, Anish, what do you drive currently? You said you want a GV70. Might take a second after we say it for him to go see it. EV6, ah, you can have both. <laughs> How's the GV70 size wise uh, compared to like the EV6 and <clears throat> the Ionic 5? Size wise, it's actually fairly, <clears throat> it's fairly close to the Ionic 5. It's a little bit shorter. Hmm. Cargo capacity is relatively similar. I forget it's, it flips. I think the Ionic 5 has a smaller trunk when the seats are up, but when the seats are folded, the Ionic 5 actually has more cargo capacity. Interesting. So the GV70 <clears throat> and the GV60 aren't that different, like that, there's not that big of a difference in size then between the two. Well, the GV60 is smaller than the Ionic 5 or the EV6. Yeah, okay. And it definitely has a much shorter tailgate area. Okay. Any thoughts about trying to get the new manufacturing plants down in Georgia? Oh, trying to get to them. <laughs> Hard hat tour would be cool content. That would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if we'd be allowed to do that, um, but that would be pretty cool to get a tour. Um, Georgia is a good ways away from me. I think it is a, a good ways away from you too. So <laughs> it'd be a little bit of a drive. You're in Virginia, right? Yeah, I'm in Virginia. Where'd you say you're, you're in? Connecticut. Connecticut, yeah. So it's a real, <laughs> a real big drive to you. A lot further for me. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> One thing that the uh, GV70 has that's really cool, like the first time you sit in it, is it has a three-dimensional <clears throat> driver display that you can turn on and off, and it's just a very slight depth effect, hmm. but it's really neat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't think it comes on the uh, base advanced edition. That's the base model is advanced. Yeah. It's interesting they name it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little confusing. <clears throat> I think you should uh I think you should give your thoughts on the Ionic 5N first. <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty quiet about it um uh I'm not a sports car guy, so like straight line acceleration is fun, but all the race track day and everything, I'm not into that, but it's a really cool call, car. I'm sure the performance nuts are going to pay eighty, ninety thousand $90,000 for it with dealer markups, <laughs> but um, it's definitely cool. I love that, that blue color it comes in. I think all the, the body work they did to it looks really slick. 
if they offered like a body kit for the standard Ionic five, I'd be all over that. But odds are, I'm probably not going to be getting an Ionic five N. Yeah. Personally, I like the, uh, I like the Ionic five N. I am a sports car guy. I've had a lot of sports cars, uh, over the years. And I think at first I wasn't the biggest fan of what they were doing with the simulated transmission and, and that type of thing. And then the downshift noises and, and all that, but after learning about it more and thinking about it, I think it does make sense. Like when you're on a track, being able to kind of hear the RPMs um, as you're like entering and exiting corners and that type of thing. Um, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. And it looks like they put a lot of work and thought into it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it'd be a lot of fun to, a lot of fun to drive. And it sounds good too, uh, from the videos I saw. I like the way that it sounds. Yeah. Nothing about Nax yet. Yeah. All I saw was that they were considering it, and then I saw an update that said they were still considering it. <laughs> well, with the Cybertruck going on sale relatively soon, and that being supposedly an 800-volt-based car, if they start switching over V3 superchargers to 800 volts, I don't know if there's just a switch in the cabinet they can flip or what. Yeah. That, that could be all, all we really need. Yep. Yeah, but I was... I was thinking the same thing. I've talked to a few people about that. Um, and that's something that gets brought up a lot is with the Cybertruck's uh, higher voltage. Hopefully that will entice Kia and Hyundai to, to move forward. Or it could be something that Kia and Hyundai are waiting until that happens to move forward. So. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there was a new update that came out today or yesterday for the Ionic 5 for the brake lights. And I'm not getting the update for another week, so I won't be able to test anything this week, but maybe they might have possibly made more changes to the charging strategy that it's currently using. We just don't know right now. Um, I will say since I got the ICCU update, my car no longer overheats at 212 degrees on the VCMS inlet port temperature. It now makes it all the way up to like 240. So... I was actually able to charge the other day at 48 amps from about 40% up to 85% wow. without, without overheating. So something changed with the ICCU update. Good yeah. change. Yeah. Although I will say that's very hot. <laughs> uh, getting up into the 240s, that's, hmm. that's not... Uh, that depends, it depends on the plastic. Yeah. I um, personally, so I've had every single EV6 update that has come out. I've had the brake light one, the ICCU, the VCMS, all the all the updates. And I tested mine just the other day and I tested it at 40 and it throttled it after about 30 minutes. And then I really? tested it at 36 um, amps and it throttled it after about an hour. So I, I've, I've had it at basically where I have to keep my, uh, I have a juice box right now that I use. I keep it at 34 amps and that seems to be the sweet spot to where it doesn't throw out a lip, at least for me personally, but I don't know. No, that's, heard... that's not a problem for you, is it? No, that's not a problem. Uh, 34 amps is still pretty fast, um, but I know some people that they can't even charge above like 28. Um, so I mean, <clears> personally, I think it's a, an issue that Hyundai and Kia need to like need to rectify. And I know people have had their charging, their charge ports replaced and they've gone from in the 200s for temperatures down into like the 140s mm -hmm. at high amperages. So it's clearly a part issue. It's not, or like a connection or like, I haven't tried cleaning my charge port. I know I've talked to some people who've said that like blowing air and cleaning them out has helped them. So maybe that could help. Um, and that could be why it's starting to happen more for vehicles. Like as people have had them for more time that maybe it's getting dirtier in there, but you wouldn't think it would have this significant of an issue when you don't, I don't really hear about this with any other EVs. So. No. Hyundai did provide me with an updated statement yesterday. I'm going to be putting out a video on that sometime yeah. this week. No, no sneak peek for the people here. Uh, live. <laughs> pull up the email. <laughs> <laughs> was it still, was it kind of the same thing of like, you kind of have to a lot, deal with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But uh, they were, they wanted to walk back some uh, previous statements that they made mm. that some people were upset about. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Probably not thrilled that you were sharing with the whole world some comments that they made. No. <laughs> a few bridges at Hyundai over the last year and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's all to get you guys the, the right information. Yeah. I think it's important to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What else do we got here? I think Hyundai wants to negotiate a similar charging deal with Tesla that they have with the EA. Uh, so if you're talking about like free charging, uh, like they have with Electrify America, that would be pretty sweet, but I haven't heard of any carrier or carrier. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of any, um, auto manufacturers getting that. So that would be interesting if they did get that. Ivan, I agree. All these recalls so close together. It's, it's not ideal, but I am glad that they're putting them out when they're available as opposed to waiting until like four come out and then just releasing them all at one time. I would prefer to just have it as soon as it's available, be able to get it. At least that's my personal thought. Yeah. And, and Kia, I mean, you guys were what, when did you get the brake light update already? That was already like a month ago, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago uh, that I got that one. Yeah, you got, Kia seems to be ahead of the curve compared to Hyundai when it comes to some of yeah. these updates. Which is interesting because I think the the video that brought to light the brake light thing uh, was that one guy who has an Ionic 5. Uh, yeah, technology connections. Yeah, so having the Ionic 5 get all the press about it and then the EV6 getting the update first was interesting to me. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that video got a lot of views. I think it, last I looked, it was close to 3 million. <laughs> yeah, same here. That's what, and I, I know uh, a lot of uh, automotive, uh, like, blogs were sharing the information um, and talking about how it's a big deal. So it definitely mm -hmm. caught Hyundai and Kia's eyes. So, All right. Well, it is getting to 7.23, and we do have a time limit since we are using Zoom. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up. I actually just had a, a pop-up right now, pop-up telling me, running out of time. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the information here to do the drawing. BC Tesla guy, my buddy that won the batteries using his car for Uber and doing really well. Good. I'm glad to hear it. That was one of the other giveaways I had done was um, a OMU battery. So good luck, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. We had uh, 514 people enter uh, with almost 2,700 entries. So uh, a lot of people entered to win uh, the Electron VBOX 48 amp EV charger here. I don't know. Maybe we should just pick one of these diehard fans that's hanging out with us tonight. That's in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead into my website here and pick the winner. How many winners? One winner. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could give away uh, a lot more than one, but. All right, and the winner is David Evans. David Evans. Is that him? D. Is Evans, here? is that you, man? That would be pretty funny. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool if it is. Yeah, wow. woo! <laughs> well, congratulations. congratulations. Uh, I'm going to send you an email um, with uh, the information I need so I can obviously confirm that you are the person that <laughs> entered and won. <laughs> Um, just make sure you reply to that email. Basically, I just need to get your name and email address or name and uh, phone number um, and your address so I can get it shipped out to you. But congratulations. I'm glad you were on here uh, with us. That's pretty That's pretty cool. Um, Has I'm that on... happened before? No, I was about to say, out of all the giveaways I've done, I haven't had uh, the person that won actually be in the chat. So uh, yeah. congratulations, David. And uh, and yeah, thank you guys for, for joining us. Does anybody have any any questions here real quick? I changed my screen. <laughs> Does anybody have any last minute questions? We got like three minutes <clears throat> before we get kicked off of Zoom. <laughs> so J Jeff, if you had to replace your car today, what would you replace it with? Oh man. <laughs> uh, something, something reasonable. Yeah. Is the EV9 out? Does that count? It's on sale in Korea if you want to import one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, I like the EV9 a lot. Um, I like its 
its size. It's not like huge, huge, but it is a decent amount bigger than the EV6 inside. Um, for my family, I think that would be a nice vehicle to get. It's very comfortable. Like it is inside, it feel it felt very comfortable to me. Um, and just like the, the quality of the materials, um, everything just seemed really nice. Like I would love to get that if I wasn't super upside down in my EV6. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Thank you, Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I think you got a question here. <clears throat> yeah, the seat comfort has gotten better since I got. I remember I almost bought an ID4 because I thought the seats in the Ionic 5 were a little too tight. And I took the leap of faith and got the Ionic 5. And being a bigger guy at first, it was a little uncomfortable, but. I think the side bolsters have opened up a little bit in the last year and a half. So I find them perfectly comfortable on long drives. That's good. Yeah. I remember that from some cars I've had in the past that had some uh, really sporty like bucket seats um, that were kind of tight, but over time they kind of even out the, the bolsters uh, to make it more comfortable, which is good. Yeah, and don't even get me started on the EV6 GT. That, <laughs> that car is not built for somebody my, my width. <laughs> Yeah. Jeff, keep your EV6. Don't go with the EV9. I, I'm, I'm probably going to keep my EV6. It would take a lot for me to get an EV9 um, because of how upside down I am. But I do love my EV6. I've done a lot with it. Um, it is a very fun car, and it's a good size. Uh, I just really like the, the EV9. So. Yeah, you find it find it works well with – you probably put car seats in and stuff, right? In in which one? In the EV9? No, in the EV6. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had it – for the past year and a half, I've had car seats in it. I've had three people sitting across in the back. Um, the fact that the rear seats recline is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got a decent amount of cargo space. And it, I have the Stealth Hitches trailer hitch, so um, I can tow things with it. Like it's, it's a good all-around vehicle. I like it a lot. And it's quick. I mean, it's not an EV6 GT quick, but... Fast enough. Yeah, 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds is pretty quick. <clears throat> it's fun. So... All right, guys. Well, we are at the end here, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you guys for participating in the giveaway. Stay tuned. Uh, I am going to be doing a lot more giveaways uh, personally on my channel. I might work with uh, the Ionic guy for some more giveaways too uh, to help give back to the EGMP community. But uh, thank you guys for uh, for joining us. Uh, do you have any? Yeah, congrats, David. Yep, congrats. Um, keep an eye out for that email. Do you have any last words of wisdom for everybody before we get off here? keep driving yeah <laughs> all right guys keep driving keep charging yep <laughs> all right we will see you guys soon thanks for joining us have a good night see you guys